All right, here we are at the very end of Peter's amazing bridge. Yeah. So at this point, all we're going to do is just a little bit of cleanup, just a little extra, if you will, basically putting on a uniform scale so we mm-hmm. can control the overall scale of the bridge. And then uh, from there, we're going to move into getting the entire thing packaged up into sure. a Houdini digital asset. Yeah. So let's uh, first get going with the overall scale. And... Um, Let's uh, add a new parameter to our master control for that overall scale. I'm going to drag that up to the top. It's a logical place to put it. And I'll call this overall scale, which I'll give a range of 0 0.001. That's too many decimal places. Up to 10. So let's accept that. And I will copy that guy and set that to 1. And we can come to the bottom of our network. Which isn't really at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, that's the way things have panned out, but we're going yeah, to rectify that in a minute. Um, yeah. Anyway, right now, we'll drop this into a transform. Okay. And we can simply set the uniform scale of this transform to our parameter we just set up. That shouldn't make any changes right now, but if we were to come and grab our master control and start tweaking our overall scale, we just have an overall scale for the bridge. Very nice. So... That was the re- only real final addition to the network. So um, I'm going to right-click and drop this into a null. The only reason for this is basically organization. Um, I'm going to name this guy display in big caps. I'm going to color him bright blue. And if we grab him and move him down so he is actually at the bottom of the network, that way you can come in, we can see him, and if we turn our display flag to him, we know we're looking at the final output of our network. Okay. So with that, we can now actually get this guy wrapped up into a digital asset. So let's uh, maximize our network editor so we can see what we're doing. We've got a fairly complicated network going on. If we grab all of our nodes and right-click in empty space, we can come down and select collapse. We could push Shift-C for the hotkey for that. This will create a subnet from all of the nodes we just selected. And I'm going to rename this subnet to bridge. If we right-click on the subnet node, we can now come down to Create Digital Asset. Now, uh, this gives us the uh, ability to specify our operator name and uh, the operator label. Uh, the most important thing is where we're saving it to. Um, you can specify a like a unique OTL file. For most assets, it's recommended to specify its own asset file. Um, for this quick example, f- uh, we're going to actually just leave it in the uh, OP custom. It's sort of like a custom um, OTL file because each OTL file can have more than one asset if you want. So we'll just add that into there and uh, that allows to bring it back in and everything. Um, you can just save out to a custom file if you want. And uh, as long as it's in install folders in the OTLs folder or in your My Documents, um, there's an OTLs folder in there. Uh, it's covered in Houdini TV's uh, assets okay. video. It'll be covered in there. So um, let's just leave this as administrative. Well, let's name this... Um, Bridge asset and uh, call the operator label bridge and uh, we can accept and that will add that into the library and give us abilities to not move the window. <laughs> thank you, Houdini. There we go. No, it's thank you, low resolution. It is thank you, low resolution <laughs> and lack of dual monitors and stuff. There you go. So, um, Actually, we don't need to see anything in the background. We can add <laughs> parameters to our digital asset just like we've been adding parameters to our master control. Um, clicking over to the parameters tab here in the pop-up window that came up, we can actually go to from nodes to see all the nodes in our network. If we find our bridge and find our master control, we can grab all of the parameters for the master control, except for there's a couple we don't want. We don't want this cache input. That was uh, on the null originally and isn't as. We also don't want true height, since we don't want to be able to control true height. True right. height is driven by an expression. Other than that, everything there we do want. And if we click over to bring everything over, they're all still going to have all of their ranges set up, and they're all still going to have... Um I am actually going to undo that... Uh so we don't have um, the... They had a prefix label with the master control underneath and it would have made it all uh, very messy. So they do have um, all of their parameters and things still set up. But if we uncheck uh, prefix, uh, prefix linked parameter label with source node label, um, that'll allow us to bring these over and not have 
crazy long names. It makes things a lot tidier since this is what we're going to see. Uh, the right. label is what we're going to see on the asset, so we don't really want to have master control underscore and everything. Um, I have left it on the names since, uh, although we're using a master control, if it was uh, pointing to other places, sometimes you drag in from various different nodes. It makes sense to know where this is pointing to in case you want to go and find it. So um, as I was saying, like various parameters still have like horizontally joined to next parameter checked and everything set up. Um, you can go in, see the channels they're dealing, and you can uh, change some default values if you want to, because some of these may have very unusual defaults. I'm not going to take the time to go through and do that right now. So I'm actually going to accept off of this window. Um, and what that's going to have created for us is a bridge asset. Yeah, with um, some of these uh, have been uh, unlinked again. But it's given us a bridge asset with all of our parameters. So I guess... First things first is to jump in and try and get these all uh, in sync again with everything. Um, it looks like width is causing a problem there, so... Let's find our width. It's possibly that. It's possibly that. Let's grab up onto the asset, and um, there we go. So, overall scale is working, width is working, length is working, width as a ratio is working, towers in length is, towers in width isn't, so let's jump inside, and that was towers in width, so that's this guy, jump back up, towers in width is now working, uh, height control is, uniform scale, tower height, the offset, number of braces, nice, the thickness there, the spacing, nice, the height of the cables, nice, and their radius, detail on them, that's a little too small on the radius. And then we've got our arcs, so let's make sure these are still working nicely, and our middle arc, nice. Number of secondary cables, their radius, and the detail on those. Coming down, we want to make sure this still works and that that's still updating, and it is very nice. And then we just got our controls for tier, so uh, number of tiers is working, the height of the tiers is working, and uh, length and width, which is like a scale of the tier system, so length, width. Position in Y. Nice. Uh, tier thickness. Nice. The edge radius there. Radius of the supports and the divisions on the support. So everything is now linked and, and working properly. What I am going to do is uh, a couple of things to uh, help with organization of this digital asset. The first is to start putting these guys into folders. The second is to, well, well, we could go through the entire network, find every reference where we're pointing to our master control, and basically point directly to our asset, such that our master control is no longer in the loop. We, by we bypass the master control, so we could delete out the master control, so that uh, these um, parameters on the asset directly control the things they relate to down in the network. Now, there's a lot going on down in the network, and it would be silly to go through and do that all on video, so we'll go through and we'll update a few. But first, let's get some folders in place and organize our parameters. So before we were editing parameter interface, with a digital asset, we're actually editing the type properties of that operator. Which they can't see right now because it's right off the screen. Okay, but let's see about this. Oh, there you go. Well, no. That's okay. Okay, if you right-click, I assure you there is an option right at the bottom called type properties. That will bring up this, this window. Um, so... Uh, we can create folders, okay. and we can use that to organize um, organize the uh, parameters on our asset. So let's uh, create a folder called uh, general, and give that a name of general. And we can start dragging parameters into that folder. So our length, our width, our ratio. And then let's drag a folder called towers. And 
put uh, tower parameters in there, so the height, I'll put the height up here, uh, with length, actually it deals with the towers more directly, so let's put the height in there, uh, the uniform scale, height, offset, um, let's bring out a new folder for braces, drop the braces into there, and one for cables. just putting all the parameters that are relating to these various large sections of the network into folders to help organize so that if you're looking for a particular parameter you can uh, click the folder yeah exactly click the folder and um, see just the parameters that are underneath this folder so finally let's deal with tiers and put everybody else into the tiers folder because uh, creating folders here with our parameters oops excuse me um, will set up tabs on our asset that basically have parameters on various tabs as opposed to all on that one massive long list because there are a lot of parameters there. So we can apply and accept. And now if we were to uh, home up on that guy, we now have various tabs with our parameters on, which is really nice. So with that, let's uh, jump in and um, bypass. Just show maybe one. Just, just one? One or two. Cool. It's really, really easy. Um, let's have a look. This guy is uh, getting his segments driven by the master controls tower num in width. I guess that's minus one. Let's bring up an expression editor there. So master control tower number width. What we actually want to do is reference the towers in width parameter from here. Um, so let's actually copy that parameter. And uh, remembering this is minus one, so if we were to close that and jump back in and paste this guy as a relative reference, and minus one from that. Now we're controlling it directly. We're now referencing the, uh, it says master control underneath, uh, underscore tower num width. That is the name of the parameter up on the asset because we used the name of the master control as a prefix to the attribute name. Right. So we've got the single dot dot forward slash taking us up to asset level and then we're specifying a parameter on the asset. So that means that we're no longer referencing the master control. Did you want me to set up any more? I'll do one more. Okay, sure thing. So um, let's come down and change, let's change our scale based on width. So currently this is looking at the master control's width and if we grab, jump up and general and width, copy you, and come into the width, and we can just uh, paste that over the top. So now we're directly referencing the width Very up nice. on the asset. And you'd simply go through, find every single node that was referencing the master control, update them to directly look at the asset, because then you could come in and you could delete out the master control node. You don't need to have a, a master control inside the network, because okay. everything's up on the asset now. Very cool. So the final thing I'd really like to show is, we've made some changes to this since we created the asset, so let's get it all updated into the file that we've saved it in. So to do that, if we right-click and come down to Save Operator Type, it will save all the changes we've made into the current operator definition. And then, now that we've saved our changes, we can right-click and come down to Match Current Definition because that will lose all unsaved changes. Um, so it will basically reload the definition as is in the file, but we've just updated the file to being exactly the same as we are now. And it will lock out our uh, assets so that you can't um, go down and change any of the... the node inside, network inside, and you can see that that's now blue to indicate that. If you did want to jump back in and uh, make tweaks and the likes, you can right click and come down to allow editing of contents, and that will allow you to jump inside, this will become red again. So I guess if we uh, demo ahead, yeah. adding a new yeah. asset in, that sweet. So um, we got this uh, bridge geometry node, let's uh, delete that out. All right. And. Um, Let's create a new instance of the bridge asset we just set up. Well, we were dealing with an asset that was a geometry, just inside geometry level. It's a surface level asset. Mm -hmm. So we're going to need to drop in a new geometry node. Um, we can call this whatever we want. I'll leave it called Geo1 for now. And we jump inside and delete out the file. In here, under the tab menu, we should be able to drop in bridge from digital assets. Excellent. That's Peter's bridge. And so we can, we've got all our controls with the width control, 
the length. And everything working. Everything working as it was. And uh, number of towers, towers in width. And the entire network is inside there. We're not allowed to change anything because we're not allowing editing the contents, but everything's up inside there. Fantastic. So, yeah, that <laughs> really does conclude absolutely everything. Well, Peter, if you see this... He did a fantastic job. He did an absolutely amazing job with his bridge. Very, very well done. Steve, you have done an excellent job breaking it apart and presenting it here for everyone. Thank you. And everyone that watched this, I hope you gained a lot from it. Yeah, me too. And we look forward to doing this again with another contest. And with that, thanks again, everyone. Thank we'll you. We'll see you.